So in this video, we're going to show you the workflow for making a digital implant impression. So before you start scanning, you're going to need to know the implant system and the diameter of the implant. And also if you're fabricating a final restoration or if you're making a provisional crown. And once you've launched 3Shape, you can go ahead and search for your patient's name and then hit new case. And then select the lab that you're going to use. Then you're going to set up the details for the case. So click on single units or bridge, depending on your particular case. You can click on screw retain crown and then select the tooth. And if you're fabricating an FPD, don't forget to go back and then designate which is your Pontic site. The next thing to do is to input the implant details. So go ahead and choose the appropriate manufacturer system and connection. Um, you can pause the video here and look at the chart and see which settings you need to input. For material section, go ahead and select zirconia monolithic. And the last thing you're going to do is to select I don't want to set a shade. You're going to end up filling that out later when you submit your DDX lab prescription form. When you get to the scanning segment of the workflow, you're going to notice that there's an extra window at the top and that's going to be grayed out. And this window will be activated uh, once you've completed the scan of that arch. But before you start scanning that arch, um, you're going to want to look at the interproximal surfaces of the adjacent teeth. So sometimes you need to modify them in order to improve the contours of the interproximal contacts. So this is going to decrease the black triangle that's caused by the large embrasure spaces and also minimizes any chance for uh, any food traps in that area. So go ahead and scan the arch and then you should see the healing abutment that's in that implant site. And then what's critical about this first scan is to accurately capture the interproximal surfaces. So it's okay that you may be missing some information as long as it's below the contact point of the crown. And this is because sometimes that space is pretty narrow and it's hard to capture that interproximal space uh, with the scanner not fitting in that area. So this is particularly common as you get closer to that free gingival margin. So do your best to capture it in its entirety, but use your clinical judgment to uh, determine if you've captured enough uh, to move on. So once you're satisfied with the scan, you can click on the trim button, and then now you're gonna cut away the healing abutment portion of that scan. And once that's done, you're going to remove the healing abutment from the patient's mouth, and then you can go ahead and rescan that area uh, to pick up the emergence profile of the implant. And when you start scanning, you want to make sure that you're starting off on the occlusal surface of the adjacent tooth so that the software can quickly recognize uh, where you are in that arch. And as you scan, you may notice that uh, you may not actually pick up the images of the actual implant surface itself and that's because it's metallic and it reflects too much light so it's not important to capture the implant itself rather the purpose of this part of the scan is to really capture the emergence profile of the implant site so then you're going to click on mark tooth and then you want to click on the soft tissue in an area that's close to the implant but don't click directly on the center uh, where there's missing data as the software is not going to recognize that area. And once you've done that, you can hit next to move on. And then the next scan, you'll see that based on where you've clicked um, on the soft tissue, the software will then cut out a portion of the uh, soft tissue in that area. Um, so this is in preparation for the scan body scan. Now, if it didn't remove all of the emergence profile portion, uh, go ahead and select trim and then you can remove the remaining part of that area. So your next step here is to seat the appropriate scan body and you can pause the video here so you can look at which uh, scan body you should be using. In order to confirm that the scan body is fully seated you're going to want to take a bite wing x-ray and you want to ensure that um, you're taking it as parallel to the implant as you can. Uh, here's a few examples that show what the uh, full seating on an x-ray should look like. Once you've confirmed the seats with your faculty, you're going to go ahead and scan the scan body itself. 
And the critical part here is to accurately capture the indexing features. Um, and that's either going to be a flat portion or it could be dots, depending on which implant system you're using. So if the scan body has a flat portion, you're going to want to make sure that that flat portion is facing the buckle because uh, that's e much easier to scan in that area. And on the lab side, what the software is going to do, it's going to match up the scan of the scan body that you made with a library file of that same scan body. And that's going to index using the indexing features to help overlay those two files together. Um, so it's okay if you don't capture 100% of the scan body, because sometimes those interproximal regions may get blocked out. Um, but you're wanting to check that the indexing features are cleanly captured. The next scan is going to be your opposing arch, and it's always a good habit to turn off the color so that you can detect if you have any stitching errors or any discrepancies and everything looks good, then you can proceed with your bite scans. And just remember, before capturing your bite scan, you're going to want to remove the scan body um, and replace it with a healing abutment, and that will ensure that your patient is able to close down all the way. Uh, be sure to check that the occlusion on your scan matches up with what's occurring in the patient's mouth. So to do that, you can click on the clearance tab and then hit switch views and then change the intensity of the contacts uh, to see where the uh, occlusal marks um, are. Go ahead and have your faculty check your scans before clicking on the post process button because uh, once you click post process, you're not gonna be able to edit those scans anymore. So after that, you can proceed to the next window and then hit send to send that scan to the lab. And then be sure to fill out a DDX lab prescription, have that approved and printed out and then that's gonna go in an empty lab box um, so that's ready for pickup. And be sure to schedule your patient's delivery appointment appropriately, uh, and that should be based on that lab's turnaround time. And just as a side note, if you're scanning to fabricate a final restoration on a patient who currently has a provisional implant crown in place, um, you have the option to select pre-preparation on the window on the right during the setup phase. So this extra pre-prep scan uh, is going to be completed first um, where you're going to scan the entire arch plus that provisional crown. And then you're going to need a click uh, to mark the tooth. And in the next window, it's going to cut that area out where you can then capture the emergence profile scan. And remember, this is where it's um, critical to uh, capture the interproximal spaces. Um, so when you do this scan, you're going to need to remove that provisional uh, before scanning. And then once you've completed that, the next uh, scan um, will be your scan body, which follows the same workflow as shown earlier.